Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at uncertainty calculations. In a previous video we had a look at how to identify uncertainties within your results. We had a look at random uncertainties and systematic uncertainties. Whilst you don't need to be able to calculate uncertainties for the exam or for your project, it is a good way to be able to access some of the evaluation marks in your project write-up. Your evaluation is worth six marks in total. Three marks of that are for evaluating your procedure. The other three marks are for evaluating your results. If you're able to identify uncertainties within your experiment, calculate those as percentages and combine them, and then apply that combined uncertainty to your final answer, you're able to access three marks of the evaluation straight away. So it can be quite a good way to pick up some marks in what is a tricky section of your project. Today we're going to be looking at how to calculate particular uncertainties for glassware, how to combine those for a calculation and then how to apply those to a final value. There are two ways to quote uncertainties. The first way that we can quote an uncertainty is as, as an absolute uncertainty with a measurement. For example, if we've measured out 50 millilitres of a liquid and we have an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0.5 mils, that means that our actual measurement of the liquid is anywhere between 49.5 and 50.5 millilitres. We can turn this into a percentage uncertainty, which will be useful later when we come to combine uncertainties. An uncertainty of 0.5 millilitres for a 50 millilitre measurement is 1%. We can convert between these two uncertainties using these equations. To calculate a percentage uncertainty, you take the absolute uncertainty, which we will look at for each piece of glassware, divide by the measurement that you have taken, and then multiply by 100. To be able to calculate the absolute uncertainty from a percentage, you take the percentage, divide it by 100, and then multiply by the measurement. Each piece of glassware has an uncertainty value associated with it. These uncertainty values change depending on the volume of your glassware and the class of your glassware. Class A glassware is the most accurate and therefore has the smallest uncertainty values associated with it. Class B is a lot more common within schools and tends to be the glassware that you'll have used. You can find out what class your glassware is by looking at the top of the glassware where it will tell you what the measurement is. For example, near the top of a pipette, it will tell you what the total volume of the pipette is what class it is and it will often tell you the uncertainty value itself. It will also tell you what temperature your glassware is calibrated to work at. The other uncertainty values we can use are those of balance readabilities. So these are plus or minus one in the final digit that your balance reads to. So for a one decimal place balance your uncertainty value is plus or minus 0.1 grams. We'll be coming back to use some of these values later on in calculations. So how do we calculate percentage uncertainties? So here we have a solution which has been measured using a grade B 20 centimetre cubed pipette and we're trying to work out the percentage uncertainty which tends to be most useful when we do calculations. So to do this we take the absolute uncertainty we divide by the measurement and multiply by 100. So using the table on the previous slide, the absolute uncertainty for a 20 centimetre cubed grade B pipette is 0 0.06 millilitres. We're measuring out 20 millilitres and then we're going to times by 100. This means that our percentage uncertainty for that measurement is 0.3%. Let's have a look at using burettes, which are slightly different. We're using the same sum. So we have our percentage is the absolute uncertainty divided by the measurement times by 100. 
Now it's important here that we take the absolute uncertainty from the table for a 50 mil pipette, 50 mil burette, which is class B, which is 0 0.1. However, the measurement is not 50 mils. We're only measuring 10 mils. So that is what goes on the bottom line. We're then going to times by 100. That gives us a percentage uncertainty of 1%. As you can see, your percentage uncertainty will change as your measurement out of your burette will change. This is why burette readings of 5 or less are deemed to be inaccurate because your percentage error that you then get is so large compared to if you used a more appropriate sized um, titer. Here's two examples for you to try. Pause the video now. So in this first example, we're trying to calculate the percentage uncertainty in a grade A volumetric flask of 250 milliliters. So we take the absolute uncertainty, which we take from the table that I showed you earlier, and divide by the measurement times by 100. So the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.15 the measurement is 250 milliliters and we times by 100. This gives us a very small percentage error of 0.06%. In our second example, we're looking at weighing out a solid on a balance. So we have a balance of two decimal places. So our sum is percentage equals absolute divided by measurement times by 100. So the absolute error for this where we have a two decimal place balance is one in the final digit. So we've got two decimal places, so it's one divided by the amount that we have weighed out, which is 10.50 times by 100. So we have a percentage error in this mass of 0.095%. Let's have a look at going the other way and trying to calculate absolute uncertainties. So here we have a burette which has been used to measure 9 centimetres cubed of solution and we know that the percentage uncertainty is 0.22%. From this information we're trying to calculate the volume and class of burette. So in the table that we had, we had the volumes of burettes and the classes, and each of those had a different absolute uncertainty. So to calculate an absolute uncertainty, we take the percentage uncertainty, divide by 100, and multiply by your measurement. So the percentage is 0.22, divide by 100 and times by our measurement, which is 9. And that gives us an absolute uncertainty of 0 0.02. If we have a look in the table, we see that this means we must have used a 10 mil class B burette. Pause the video now and try this calculation. we've been given a mass of calcium carbonate to weigh out and a percentage with which we need to be accurate within. So we need to calculate the absolute uncertainty associated with this percentage. So like the previous example, the absolute uncertainty is the percentage divided by 100 multiplied by the measurement. So the percentage is 0.2% divided by 100 multiplied by the measurement, which here is 17 grams, which means that our absolute uncertainty is 0 0.034 grams. We need to know if a one decimal place balance would be accurate enough. So a one decimal place balance would measure to 17 plus or minus 0.1 grams. We need to measure 17 plus or minus 0 0.034 grams this is more accurate. Therefore, a one decimal place balance would not be suitable in this case. There are some other uncertainties to take into account. 
The end point of any titration is always plus or minus 0 0.05 millilitres. This is the volume of one drop, so is roughly the amount that you'll be out in most titrations. This is in addition to any burette uncertainty that comes from the calibration of the burette and the random uncertainty there. EDTA titrations are notoriously difficult to see the colour changes of, as the indicators that we use tend to have a, more of a gradient of colour. Therefore, the end point of an EDTA titration is 0.1 mil. If you're measuring out a substance and you know you've worked out the gram formula mass and you're intending to work out some moles and you are using a two decimal place balance, if your gram formula mass is only calculated to one decimal place, then you need to consider the error of a gram formula mass, which is plus or minus one in the final digit. If your gram formula masses are calculated to two decimal places, you don't need to consider this. So on to combining uncertainties. If the calculation that you're doing involves addition and subtraction, then you add together absolute uncertainties to get your total uncertainty in your value. If the calculation that you're doing involves multiplication or division, which many of our calculations do, you need to add together percentage uncertainties, which is why we had a look at those in so much detail. We're going to work through some examples to see how this works. For all of the examples, this is the process we're going to carry out. The first step is to carry out your calculation as normal. Step two is to identify either your absolute uncertainties for each value where you're doing addition and subtraction calculations, or to calculate your percentage uncertainties for each value within your calculation where possible. Step three is to combine these through addition. And step four is to apply your uncertainty to the final value. This is not a true statistical analysis version of doing uncertainty calculations, but for the purposes of what we're doing, it will give us enough of an idea to be able to apply it to a final value and have an idea of where the errors have came into our calculations. Here's an example of an addition and subtraction calculation. So we're simply weighing out some calcium carbonate in a weighing bottle. So step one for this calculation is to carry out the calculation as normal. So we just want to know what the mass of calcium carbonate is. So we're going to take the mass of the weighing bottle and the calcium carbonate together, and we're going to minus the weight of the weighing bottle on its own. So we know that we've weighed out 12.12 .12 grams of calcium carbonate. Step two, we need to work out what our absolute uncertainties are because we're doing a subtraction calculation here. So we have two. So there's the mass of the bottle. So the uncertainty here is 0 0.01 because we're to two decimal places. And there's the mass of the bottle plus the chalk, which is also 0 0.01. Step three is to combine these. So we simply add these two values together to get our total absolute uncertainty. We can then apply that to our final value. So we have weighed out 12.12 .12 plus or minus 0 0.02 grams. We can also calculate this as a percentage uncertainty. So if we do 0 0.02 divided by the measurement times by 100, we find the percentage is 0 0.17. So we can also write this as 12.12 .12 grams plus or minus 0.17%. Multiplication and division calculations are quite common within chemistry when we're doing mole calculations, for example. Here we have a dilution example. So a class B pipette has been used to measure 20 centimetres cubed of 1.02 mole per litre hydrochloric acid. We're putting that into a 250 centimetre cubed class B volumetric flask. We've then made the solution up to the graduation mark with deionized water and we're to calculate the concentration of the diluted acid plus its absolute uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty in the concentration of the undiluted acid is also given. So step one is to carry out our calculation as we would. 
So we're doing a dilution calculation here. So we're trying to find the concentration of the diluted acid. So if we use a C1V1 equals C2V2 calculation. So our initial concentration is 0 1.02 and our initial volume is 0 0.02. That's equal to our new concentration times our new volume, which is 0 0.25. So the new concentration here is 0 0.0816 moles per litre. So step two, we need to calculate the percentage uncertainty for each of the bits of equipment that we're using. So for the pipette, we're using a class B 20 centimetres cubed pipette. So it's 0 0.06 divided by 20, that's taken from the table earlier on. So that's a 0.3% uncertainty. For the volumetric flask, 0 0.3 divided by 250 times 100 is 0 0.12%. And then finally, we've also been given the uncertainty in the original acid, which is 0 0.02 divided by the original concentration, multiplied by 100, which is 2%. For step three, we're going to add these three percentages together. to give us 2.42%. The question asks for us to have this in an absolute uncertainty. So we're going to take our percentage, divide by 100 and multiply by the measurement, which is the new concentration. And now we can join that to our concentration. So we have 0 0.0816 plus or minus 0 0.02 moles per litre. Pause the video now and try this calculation. So within this calculation, we have to do both a subtraction calculation and multiplication and division calculations. This means we have a few different error calculations going on. So the first thing we need to do is to just calculate the density of the substance. So to do that, we need to have the mass of the substance and we need to have the volume of the substance. The volume has been given to us, but the mass is a mass by difference. So we have a weighing boat and the mass of the substance is 3.95 grams. And we're going to take away the mass of the weighing boat at 1.32 to give us a mass of 2.63 grams. Density can then be calculated. Density is the mass of the substance divided by the volume. So we have 2.63 divided by 1.5. So that's 1.75 grams per centimetres cubed. So in step two, Overall, our calculation for density is a division calculation, therefore we need to have percentage uncertainties. But to be able to get our percentage uncertainty in the mass, we need to use the absolute uncertainties. So the first thing we're going to do is to get our percentage uncertainty in the mass. We have two mass readings, both to two decimal places. So we're going to add together the two absolute uncertainties of 0 0.01 to get an absolute mass uncertainty of 0 0.02. We then need to calculate this as a percentage. So we take the absolute, we divide by the measurement, which is that of the mass, and then times by 100 to get a percentage uncertainty of 0.76%. For the volume, we know that we're using a 10 mil class B burette. So the error in the 10 mil class B burette is 0 0.02. The volume measurement is 1.5 millilitres, not 10. That is just the measurement of the full burette. We're looking at what we actually measured out of it. And then we times by 100 to get 1.33%. 
For step three, we need to add together our two percentages that we've calculated. So we've got 0 0.76 and 1.33, giving us a total percentage uncertainty of 2.09%. So for step four, we can write out our density as 1.75 grams per centimetres cubed plus or minus 2.09%. We can also write this as an absolute uncertainty by converting it. So we take the percentage, divide by 100, and then multiply by the measurement. So we can also write out the density using the absolute uncertainty, which is 0 0.037 grams per centimetre cubed. Pause the video now and try this final example. So this is a, an example of a titration calculation. So step one, as we have for all the other calculations, is to just calculate this as we normally would. So the first step is to use your average titer and the concentration of hydrochloric acid to find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid used in the titration. So we use 0 0.0118 moles of HCl. There's a one to one mole ratio, which means that we use the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide and that was measured in a 20 ml pipette. So from there we can work out the concentration of the sodium hydroxide that was used. So the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.59 moles per litre. And as you can see from this calculation, this is a calculation involving multiplication which means that for step two, we're needing to find the percentage uncertainties for each of our measurements that we have here. We haven't been given any percentage uncertainty for the concentration of HCl, so we're just going to uh, forget that one just now. We'll start by looking at the pipette. So the pipette that we've used is a class B pipette and it's a 20 ml pipette. So using that table from earlier, 0 0.06 divided by 20 times 100 to give us 0.3%. The burette is also a class B burette and is a 50 ml burette, so a common burette that would be used in a classroom. And we're measuring 21.8 mils from the burette. That gives us a percentage of 0.46%. We also have the end point uncertainty from our burette. So that's always 0 0.05 because this is not an EDTA calculation and we're dividing by the average titer that we've used which is 21.8. So that gives us a percentage of 0.23%. So for step three, we need to add these three together. So our total percentage is 0.99% if we add up these three percentages here. So step four, we're wanting to have this as an absolute uncertainty. So we're going to take the percentage uncertainty, divide by 100 and multiply by the measurement, which is the concentration of sodium hydroxide, which we've calculated, which is 0 0.006. So our concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.59 plus or minus 0 0.006 moles per litre. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and on Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry. Bye for now.